Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today I just want to talk about some financial prepping that I've been doing. Um, it's probably no secret by now that uh, we got some issues going on in the world. Obviously, we got possible war, war with China with involvement with, um, you know, Russia and who knows who else. But um, the financial system is taking a beating right now. Uh, if you follow along on the Internet um, on what happened with the bank collapses like SVB and a couple other ones that are out there. Obviously, it's no secret, right? There's banks have been collapsing. And, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs and pros and cons and people saying, oh, yeah, it's the end of the world. And the other guys are like, calm down. It's not the end of the world. But but the fact is, a lot of banks are having some issues. And you combine that with the BRICS nations. If you don't know about BRICS, again, you can Google it. Uh, B-R-I-C-S. BRICS. Um, I believe uh, they're talking to other countries to join BRICS. So... Probably uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, probably Mexico and who knows who else. Well, there's a bunch of other, and African countries as well. So um, there's there is a lot of talk about um, issues with the world economy and the petrodollar and all that good stuff. You can research it on your on your own. I'm not gonna give a little class here on what's going on with the world, but if you've been following along with um, Canadian Prepper or Sensible Prepper or any of the Prepper channels. That have over a million subscribers you kind of know what i'm talking about already right so, um so i just wanted to talk to you guys about some of the preps that i've been doing over the last few months and um so this is what i've been doing uh, again i'm not a financial uh, expert by any means this is just what i'm doing it partially it's fun just to do and two it's practical to have a hobby that also um can help save your life right so <laughs> uh, it's a two-in-one kind of deal here so what i've done is first off, uh, I'm not telling you guys to go to the bank and get your money out, but it is a good idea to have some emergency cash at your house. There are pros and cons to that because your house could burn down and you lose all your money. But in general, it's good to have some cash just laying around. Um, I have about what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars in cash here. Um, of course, this is not all your all my money. There's no that wouldn't be smart to take all your money out of the bank. Uh, even though we do have signs <laughs> that tell you it probably would be a good idea. Our life savings is still in the bank, so it should be insured for what, up to $250,000, right? Because I'm not a rich man. I'm just a blue-collar regular guy. But um, um, over the past few months, I have been taking some cash out just to have it around the house, just in case you wake up tomorrow and the power's out. And then you go to the bank and the ATMs don't work. And then you go to the grocery store and the doors are locked and everything is just shut down you're like well at least you have some traveling money so you could buy from a farmer's market or from your neighbor or whoever you come along you can still buy things and uh, i know what people are saying oh but money's not going to be worth anything it's possible that this fiat currency that's just paper not backed by gold won't be worth anything or be worth um, a lot less in the future but as it stands like right now we're talking about tomorrow if the power went out tomorrow, this would still hold its value for a little while. You know, the world's not collapsing. Something just happened that caused a big pause in um, either your city, your state or your or the country. There's just a big pause. Remember um, a big pause we had when the towers came down on 9-11. Uh, there was a big pause in 2020 when we had the, uh, the Rona. So it's just nice to have cash as a little backup plan so in case you had to either bunker in and stay home bunker down stay home not go to the bank not go to the great grocery store not go out of your house um, you have money to just deal with day-to-day -day life in general bartering buying things um, who knows with friends and family just just good to have all right um, i've also gotten to gold and silver and i talked about this in another video um, this is about $500 in silver. Um, silver has gone up and down, but mostly up in the last month. Ever since the uh, the bank collapse um, of those top three banks there, uh, silver and gold has gone through the roof. I haven't even checked what spot price is, but silver is roughly around $25 an ounce. So I have 20 ounces here. Um, I actually talked my mom and dad into investing a little bit of silver too. And uh, it's not really investing. It's more like just locking in your wealth so you don't lose um, your wealth. 
So the, the mindset behind this is, is um, you don't get into gold and silver to get rich. You have to have a little bit of wealth to get into this game. And then all you're doing is locking it in. So if the banks fail, you still have God's money right here in your hands and it's not going anywhere unless somebody robs it from you or um, for whatever reason, you, you just, I don't know, lose it <laughs> in a, a mudslide or something like, like it physically gets taken away from you, right? But you have your wealth, you have your money locked in here. Again, diversifying, you know, you still have your stocks and bonds and your Bitcoin and whatever it is you want to invest in, real estate and all that good stuff. Diversify your your uh, investments, but I think it's still smart to have, as a blue collar guy anyways, some silver and gold. Um, I just purchased my first gold coin uh, a couple days ago. Actually, it was a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is a gold uh, buffalo. This is a United States mint gold buffalo. 24 karat gold. Absolutely beautiful. I decided to go um, with this one as my very first gold purchase because um, I just thought it was cool to say that it's 24 karat gold. So you could literally bite this with your teeth and, and it'll leave a mark because pure gold is um, not very strong as far as a, a metal goes. So I have it in this capsule just to protect it. But uh, that was my very first gold purchase. And it was a little nerve wracking at first. Cause I never did it before. You know, buying this for what at the time I bought it was like uh, out the door was like twenty one hundred dollars, something like that. And the spot price of gold now, I don't even know what it is. I think it's like um, two thousand and ten dollars, two thousand and twenty dollars. I don't know what it is. I haven't checked it in a couple of days. But let's just say it's it's two thousand dollars for one ounce so this right here this one ounce gold is the equivalent of this much paper <laughs> that's pretty sweet right it's very compact and dense uh, as far as um, wealth goes so carrying around a bunch of this versus just carrying around a couple of these you know it's a lot easier to carry these around so again if from a survival point of view a bug out point of view um, it, in my opinion, it does make sense to invest in a little bit of gold. And then of course, silver, even though it's a little bit easier to divide and buy things like if you were to buy something with this $2,000 coin, you better hope it's worth $2,000 because who's going to have change for $2,000. Hey, I want to buy that camera right there. That's an Insta360 camera. That thing's worth about $400. Well, here's $2,000 right here. You got change. It's kind of hard to do that. So, um, Versus this right here, you know, this is probably what I say, 25 each. So you can do $400. You can do $400 in silver and be like, there you go. There's $400 right there. And pretty much make life a lot easier when it comes to bartering and buying. So that's what I think the big benefit is with silver. Um, if you didn't have access to a bank and plus you wanted to just again lock in your wealth in precious metals there's also another option too here i know a lot of you guys if you watch a lot of these prepper channels um there's these things called gold backs so uh, these are kind of cool this is actually real gold this is gold fractional gold um, that has been basically in, embedded in a polymer little i don't know what you call it it's it's basically pure gold that's been pressed into this polymer protective sheet. And if you read down there, I don't know if you can read it down there, but um, it actually says one one thousandth troy ounce of 24 karat gold. So these are very hard to, uh, to fake because the process is very expensive to do. And it has all kinds of water, or not watermarks, but just like proof or anti-theft markings on it. And most people who are into gold already know what these are. So it's easy to trade these between people who are knowledgeable on this. So again, if you had a thousand of these $1, that would make one ounce of gold technically. So this is very um, divisible in a way. So again, if you want to buy something like that camera, you can start trading with gold backs and say, here, here's $400 in gold backs, right? So it's kind of like having that all split up into one one thousandths of an ounce. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. Uh, the downside to these is um, the premiums are through the roof on these things. So even though this is a dollar, the shop that sells them and the company that makes them have to make a profit too. So you're going to have to pay a premium on that one dollar. 
So these are probably selling for three to five dollars each, even though it's a one dollar value. So I don't really know if this is going to get popular or not. It's just fun right now for me. I don't have a lot of them. They're just fun. I give them away as gifts to my, my friends and family. It's just kind of fun, right? Because it is 24 karat gold. So that's cool. And it's beautiful too, on top of that. But uh, will it be used in a shit hits the fan situation? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, um, it is a dollar. It does have a, a face value of a dollar backed by gold because it is gold. So I don't know. It's one of those things you got to, only way to find out is to test it when something happens. There are states though and cities that already said on the internet that they would do business with gold back. So um, Utah's very um, prepper oriented because of the Mormons out there. And a lot of Mormon companies have already said that they'll take gold backs. You can go buy a sandwich, go to Subway or whatever and buy a sandwich using gold back dollars, not um american u.s dollars so you just have to find the companies that are willing to do that so that's, that's that's what i got going on here i got some cash i got some silver i got some gold and i got some gold backs so uh again i mean do your homework on buying gold and silver there's tons of excellent videos on the subject um educate yourself on what's going on in the world as far as the banking crisis, um, the collapse of the U.S. dollar, possibly BRICS nations um, forming up and organizing to try and take down the U.S. petrodollar. And uh, if you don't know about that, just research BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, and you will uh, definitely learn a lot. Uh, of course, uh, stay up to date on what's going on with the world because China might be invading Taiwan here and who knows what's going to happen if that happens. And then again, I highly recommend checking out Canadian Prepper, Sensible Prepper, and there's a whole bunch of other guys out there too that do this stuff. But yep, hit that like button to support my channel. I appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And let me know what you think about my financial preps here. Um, do you think it's wise? Do you think it's foolish? Uh, and what do you have going on with your financial preps? Take care, guys.